Hi everybody, this is Campy and Kurt. and welcome to Let's Go Camping with Mount Comfort RV. I'm your host, Kurt Hunt. We're so very glad you chose to join us today. It's gonna be a fun-filled half hour with something for everyone who is into the outdoors. Stand by for a review of one of the best RVs of the year, an Intex Soul Terra. We'll also hear from Kevin Kemp, of Camp Outside, and we'll learn of a neat opportunity for first-time campers at Connor Prairie in Indianapolis. So let's go camping. Here's Campy and Travis. Hey everybody, it's Campy and I am here at Mount Comfort RV and we are with, I think, Travis today. I don't know, let's see what's going on. Oh, 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 oh what a surprise <laughs> this is, hey, Campy. Hey. What is this that you're in? Oh my gosh, and it's Tony with a camera. Oh, yeah, I, I know, we probably this. snuck up on you. I know, just like this microphone. <laughs> anyway, so we are on a brand new Intec Terra Oasis. <gasps> Oasis, that sounds yeah. nice. So this thing, um, like the rovers you saw in the showroom and whatnot, mm -hmm. Intec builds this. It's their very first tandem axle trailer heavily anticipated by the RV community mm -hmm. and all the Intech followers. Mm -hmm. And we've got one here at Mount Comfort RV. All right. Yeah. Are there any special features on the outside? I'm not sure. You said something axle. I don't really know what that means. So tandem axle just means it has two axles. Oh, right? okay. So supports the weight. It's going to pull a little bit better than a single oh. axle. It's a little bit better balanced. Okay. This whole thing, check this out. You see this frame? I don't know how much you care about this, but the viewers do. <laughs> okay. So you see oh. that aluminum? Yeah. That's the way this whole thing is framed out. Uh -huh. So very sturdy, uh -huh. um, very nice, very, built very well, right? Okay. Built to take a punch. Oh, good. Um, you want you want your trailer to be sturdy and reliable, so right, I and do to take care. a punch in case you are next to angry campers. I and so often I am. You, you wouldn't <laughs> believe Travis. <laughs> so many times. So the nice uh, Thule awning yes. up there, outdoor lights. I see the little lights. Yep. Oh, and those two. You got some storage back there. Well, nice. LP connection, propane connection for like a gas grill or something. Oh, okay. Um, so actually. Grill out. Yeah. So this is a little oh. pull out kitchen. <gasps> if I can get it. So there's that. Nice. Oh, Tony, we should have, we should have practiced this. <laughs> oh, mercy. There it goes. Ooh, yeah, oh, wow. Yeah, look at the size of this bad Oh my boy. goodness. Okay, I was not expecting. It was like never ending. <laughs> yeah, so you can get this with just storage back there. But who would want that to be storage when you've got an entire kitchen packed in there, right? Right. So a griddle top, you got, this can be cooktop here. Mm -hmm. And then underneath there is the... Uh, um, Cooler, a fridge, or yep. freezer. Yep. Is it one of those that can be a freezer or a fridge? Right. Yes, ma'am. Good. All right, I'll figure this back out, not on camera. <laughs> and we'll, we'll go inside. Okay. I like this little handle for yeah. safety. Safety first. Wow. Oh my right. gosh. Okay, this window first of all stands out to me. Yeah. So let's not let's not look at that rugged pursue right there that's already been off roading. <laughs> right. That's what it Mount could look Comfort like behind RV your Jeep. Selling dirty campers. <laughs> the rugged campers. Right. So this is your dinette. Mm -hmm. The table goes here. All right. And you, you've got all this seating. It will also make a bed. Okay. Perfect. Right. So very similar to their uh, their other models. Um, where, except for it's going to be much larger, obviously. Right. So tall ceilings, Terra. I like that. Does this open? Oh, this open from the bottom. gosh, they're closed so securely. Right. I'm still getting used to that. Speakers up front, <laughs> up there. Speakers? Yeah. For my parties? For the parties. Nice. For the for RV my, raves. For my raves. Yeah. yeah. My RV Counter raves. Counter space. Famous. <gasps> nice so, size TV here. Right. I like these walls. This is like a mix between a spaceship and a uh, sailboat. Oh. So here's your toilet. I'll let you go check Ooh. that out. Thank you. Oh, wow. Oh, this is actually really, really pretty. And we've got a lot of natural light in here, which I like because when you're doing, if you're a girl, you know, when you're doing your makeup, 
when you're out camping doing your makeup. <laughs> that natural light really helps. This is nice. Wow. Oh my goodness. All right. Very nice. But what's that? If this is the bathroom. That's the shower. Oh. Oh, it's big. Oh, a shower mirror. That's a new feature. Yeah. Love that. And oh, these little pockets are nice to hold all of your shower shower yeah. utilities. And shower that shower material. head slides up and down that rail right there for adjustment for height. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm going to close this. Okay. I'm going to close really this. Oh, oh, <laughs> let me get out. I so, want to get stuck. Check out this sweet door before mm -hmm. you come through here, Tony. This is nice. Ooh. Ooh. This is fancy. Yeah. This it's is on quality this. here. This is like yeah. interior design. Right. Look at this level. Metal roller. Very nice. Oh gosh, it's like a barn door. Right. That's very trendy. So very trendy. Queen size bed. Oh, wow. Little cabinets on both sides and more nice. speakers. Oh my gosh. So the party doesn't have to stop in the dining room. Okay. We can bring it back here and look at this closet with the hooks and everything. I love all of that sneaky storage everywhere. <laughs> well, it's the, everywhere, Travis. These bright white cabinet doors scream sneaky. Sneaky. <laughs> I wouldn't see them if I if I wasn't looking. What's this? So that so is this your, controls all of your Yep, it's going to control your AC and all that type of stuff. Okay, and then this nice. is going to control your max air vents uh, right here. Very so nice. remote control. Oh my goodness. This is beautiful. Isn't it though? And then let's see what we got under ah, here. What? Oh, so there's your dining. There's your dinette table. So that's where you're sleeping, and then I'm sleeping up on, on top, right? Uh, negative. <laughs> um, yeah, no, not at all. Oh. Not a lot of place to breathe back. If you leave yeah, this open, I, I mean, will. you'll be fine. Can you sleep at an incline like this or a decline? <laughs> uh, you know what? Surprisingly, I probably could actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very sleepy girl. Oh, very, very well. nice. I'm going to take this out. Thank you so much, Travis, for the yeah. tour of this, what's it called? Intech Terra Oasis. Intech Terra Oasis. And it feels like an oasis in here, let me tell you. Very limited supply of these bad boys. So you better get it quick. Right, call Mount Comfort RV today. Try our easy to use shop by payment tool. You set what you want to spend, and our True Payments engine will find the best matches across our entire inventory. You can even add your trade in. You'll get customized financing for every vehicle matching your budget. You'll be amazed at what you can buy. There is no impact on your credit and no obligation to buy. Shop by payment. Ready for today's camper quiz? Who was the fictional park ranger that is Yogi Bear's main antagonist in the Yogi Bear cartoon series? Is it A, Ranger Scott, B, Officer Martin, C, Ranger Smith, or D, Trooper Tom? The answer is coming up after this segment of Exploring Indiana from our friends at the Indiana Department of Natural Resources. Goose Pond Fish and Wildlife Area is made up of habitat types unique to Indiana and requires intensive management to keep it healthy. Much of Goose Pond is made up of early successional habitat, which is habitat in its earliest stages of growth and lacks trees. Many of our core habitat management activities include water level manipulations, prescribed fire, mowing and disking in our grasslands, and spraying trees with herbicide. Each year in the spring and fall, some wetland units are slowly drained to improve habitat. This practice, which is known as a drawdown, exposes flat, muddy areas. These mud flats provide habitat for birds that require shallow water. And as the growing season continues, these mud flats grow plants that are excellent food for wildlife in the fall and winter. Managing our wetlands this way helps us to host thousands of ducks, geese, and cranes during their migrations. My best tip for viewing birds here is to bring a pair of binoculars 
a spotting scope, along with a field guide to help you identify the birds you might see. Goose Pond is a vast property, so these items will help you get really good views of the birds here. Wildlife at Goose Pond is most active early in the morning and late in the evening. Did you know that you could hike 35 miles of levee systems? These make great trails around our wetland units. If you take the time to hike them, you can get some great views of birds. The birds at Goose Pond are rarely in the same place all the time and are highly mobile, so it's best to drive the county roads through the property to help you find what you're looking for. Though the birds are always on the move, I have my own favorite spots that people are almost always likely to see something. I recommend checking out Main Pool West from the parking lot off of Highway 59 with the Big Goose Pond sign, and from the south end of County Road 1200 West. Main Pool East from the County Road 1200 West footbridge, GP 11 South, GP 10 North, and many of the Bee Hunter Marsh units. Lastly, don't hesitate to call or stop in the office to see what birds might currently be in the area and to help plan for your visit. We look forward to seeing you at Goose Pond soon. Hey guys, I'm Kevin with Kemp Outside, your inside source for all things outside. Whether you've been camping forever or are just starting out, you need high quality gear. And one of the things that you're going to need is a good cooler. There are primarily two types of coolers on the market today, and we're going to take a look at each one so that you can make a better decision on what cooler suits your needs and the needs of your family. The first one we're going to take a look at today is my Arctic 65 quart cooler. And the other one we're going to take a look at is a brand new cooler I just got, the Coleman Extreme Marine 120 quart cooler. Now, as you can see from the coolers behind me, these coolers are pretty close to the same size in the outer dimensions. But the Coleman has almost double the capacity. And you might think that that's the most important thing. And it could be. It's one of the reasons why I bought this cooler was because of the capacity. But there are things that the Arctic does a lot better. And I want to talk about those. So number one, the Arctic is a rotomotor cooler, which means that it has much thicker sidewalls, much better insulation, it has rubber latches that hold the cooler closed, and it has a refrigerator grade gasket that holds the cool temperature in the cooler. So if you leave that cooler closed and sealed, your ice is going to last much longer into your trip than if you use the Coleman Extreme. However, all of that insulation and the heavy dutiness of the cooler makes it a lot heavier. So that 65 quart cooler from Arctic weighs 36.5 pounds empty. The Coleman Extreme cooler weighs just 25 pounds empty. And again, it's double the capacity. So let's talk about ice retention. Is it important to buy a rotomotor cooler? And I would say the answer depends. If you're going camping for more than uh, you know, a week at a time and getting ice is not a very easy thing to do, you might want to consider the cost of a rotomotor cooler. Your ice will last longer and your food will stay cold longer. However, if you're camping where it's very easy to get ice, if you're at a campground where there's uh, a camp store or ice vending machines or that kind of thing and it's not difficult to get ice, you might decide to go with a standard cooler because it's just easy to drain your water and refill with ice as needed. The other thing that you're going to want to consider is durability. So rotomotor coolers are very well built. They're very strong. Uh, you can stand or sit on the lid of a rotomotor cooler. As a matter of fact, down here in Florida where I live, fishermen put these on their boat and they use them as casting platforms. They stand on them so they can see farther. Whereas a standard cooler like this, you definitely don't want to put too much weight on the lid. Coleman does say that you can sit on this lid, but I wouldn't chance it. I want my cooler to last longer. The other thing that you're going to want to consider is capacity, right? So a standard cooler is always going to have a higher capacity than a rotomotor cooler that are roughly the same size. And the reason is because the interior of those coolers are a lot less thick in a standard cooler versus a rotomotor cooler. So guys, the reason why I have both is because sometimes I need the ice retention 
of a Rotomola cooler, and sometimes I need the capacity of the standard cooler. If I bought a 120 quart rotomotive cooler, it would be too heavy for me to move and I don't want to deal with that. So I buy standard capacity coolers in the larger sizes. The other thing is guys, is a lot of times on my camping trips, I take extended trips. And so regardless of how well the Arctic holds ice, I still need to buy ice halfway through my trip. And so if I have to buy ice anyway, I might as well buy a cheaper cooler. So that's the last thing I want to come to guys is cost. So the Arctic cooler cost me $240 on the Arctic website. The Coleman I just picked up for $55. So for almost a fifth of the cost, you can get a cooler with twice the capacity. It's definitely something to consider when you are making your plans and you're purchasing all your gear to go camping. Guys, I hope this has helped you. I hope to see you at the campsite. For Let's Go Camping, I'm Kevin Kemp with Camp Outside. Seven Nights for free. Go to camp7nights.com for more information. So here's the answer to today's camper quiz. Who is the fictional park ranger that is Yogi Bear's main antagonist in the Yogi Bear cartoon series? The answer is C, Ranger Smith. He first appeared in a 1958 Yogi Bear cartoon episode and still today can't figure out how to stop Yogi and Boo Boo from stealing those picnic baskets. Ever wish you didn't have to interrupt your weekend for a haircut? Seems like a solution was discovered many years ago. Watch this. Almost anything is apt to pull into a trailer camp nowadays, but the last thing you'd expect is a perambulating barber shop. If you won't come to the barber, the barber will come to you. And here's a customer. Johnny wants a haircut. Right this way, young man, to the Blue Sky Tonsorial Parlor. Here they are. But are they? Where's the shop? Well, leather my whiskers. Hmm. Not a bad idea, this. No rent. Cuts down on the overhead. He seems to have just about everything in there but a pink police gazette. Tony never has to ask the customer if he wants it wet or dry. The weatherman decides that. This is the only barbershop in the world that issues rain checks. Johnny wants a haircut like his old man's with a hole in the middle. Well, it'll be a long time before he has to comb his hair with a towel. Now for a little tonic to give Johnny that real barbershop aroma. The lacquer finish serves Tony as a mirror. Take a look at yourself, Johnny. A lot of boys will see themselves as others see them. Well, when a fellow's going out with the girls, he has to do it right. Another shekel goes into the cash register. And the blue sky barbershop moves on, trailing more customers. Start planning your next family vacation with a rental RV from Mount Comfort RV. Our rental fleet features new RVs of all sizes that fit all budgets, beginning at just $71 per day. You can come and go on your own schedule. No lines, no canceled flights, and no hassles. Enjoy the safest and most secure way to travel with your family and friends while enjoying both the journey and the destination. For more information on RV rentals, go to mountcomfortrv.com. 
Sarah Land Park and Campground in Columbus, Indiana sits on 350 sprawling acres of natural beauty. It's Indiana's sports and recreation destination, all wrapped around a spacious wooded campground. Active campers will love the boating, fishing, hiking, and biking, while others will enjoy just pulling up a chair and taking in the evening entertainment. Go to saraland.org for reservations. That's saraland.org. If you missed any of our past episodes, you can always catch up by going to our website, letsgocampin.com. Deer Campy is on deck right after this from our friends at Connor Prairie in Indianapolis. Hi everyone, I'm Christine with Connor Prairie here today with Zach White, also of Connor Prairie. Zach is going to tell us about Connor Prairie's latest initiative, We Can Camp. Thanks, Christine. We are super excited to be offering this new program. Great. And how did the idea for We Can Camp come about? So we saw that there's a real interest in going camping, especially um, with everything that's been happening uh, in the world lately. People want to get outside, they want to recreate, but they don't necessarily know how to do it. So um, we're trying to solve that problem. Great. What can guests expect when they come to this new initiative of We Can Camp? Yeah, so We Can Camp is meant to take folks that maybe have never camped before, it's been a long time, and really be introductory for them. So. Um, they're going to get the full package, a guided experience camping. Um, they're not going to have to provide gear of their own. Uh, so they're going to arrive, maybe never having camped before, have this great uh, camping and recreation experience, and then be prepared to go camping on their own. Now, do you have to be a certain level of camper to be able to participate? It's a great question. I mean, this is really designed for people that have an interest, but if they've never done it before in their life, um, they'll still have a great experience. So if you're a family and you're RSVPing online to participate in this program, what is it that you have to do? Like, what are the steps that you have to go through? Yeah, so the reservation all takes place online on ConnorPrairie.org, mm -hmm. um, and we provide a packing list, which really is just groceries and bedding. So if you have food in the fridge and you have a comforter and a fitted sheet, you're ready to come out here, all the rest of the gear is provided. So that's it, just basically your food and something to sleep with. Go online, sign up, and show up. Zach, can you elaborate a little bit more on the specifics of what the families will do when they come to this program? Yeah, absolutely. So it's really um, Saturday at 1 o'clock until Sunday at about 10 a.m. and is an overnight camping experience. Um, as soon as they get here, they're going to be connected with their guide. So we have trained guides that will lead them through setting up their campsite um, and getting that prepared for the day. Um, there's some activities that we talked about, archery and fishing um, and hiking the Northwoods and enjoying everything Connor Prairie has to offer. We've got a few workshops, so we'll talk to families about planning their own camp out. What should they bring? Where should they go? What considerations might that be? Um, a workshop on how to use a stove. Uh, we have two burner propane stoves that we provide and making sure people are comfortable with that. Um, as well as how to wash dishes in a camp setting. You know, there's no uh, kitchen sink here, so we have another method that we teach people how to use. Um, they'll prepare their dinner with assistance from staff, so um, cooking on that stove so they really do feel comfortable with it. Um, and then close out the night with some campfires, including how to build one yourself. Um, certainly do some s'mores, it wouldn't be camping if we didn't have s'mores. <laughs> and make sure that we're addressing questions that people have about, um, you know, being prepared to go out and do this on their own. And then Sunday morning, uh, waking up, cooking breakfast, showing how to break camp, because if you've set it up, you have to know how to put it all away too, to be ready for your next camp out. Um, and then families will depart on Sunday morning. So it really is something for everybody, and it doesn't matter if you're a novice. You don't have to feel you know, afraid or just, you know, oh, I've never done it before. I don't think this is for me. You can come and learn to camp and have a great time. Absolutely, and with those guides that are working individually with each family, um, really answering those questions and alleviating those concerns uh, to get everyone interested in going out and camping as a family. Great. And so how excited are you for the launch of this program? You know, I grew up camping and have had the benefit of that experience and the ability to introduce other people to that, um, I think is huge. When we can equip people to get out and go camping as a family, that's what it's all about. Great. All right. Well, thank you so much, Zach, for talking with us today. And we can't wait for everybody to come out to Connor Prairie and join in the fun at We Can Camp.
Hello everybody, it's Campy, and I'm here with another edition of Dear Campy. Let's jump right in. Our first letter comes from Jim in West Lafayette. I have a grandpa named Jim. Small world, but enough about me. Jim writes, Dear Campy, how do I know when it's time to grease the wheel bearings on my travel trailer? Well, Jim, obviously it depends on the miles those little wheels turn. A good rule of thumb is once a season, but if your camping season has been a handful of short trips, you can probably get by with skipping a year. Jim, make sure you consult your owner's manual for details. Our next email comes in from Carly in Knightstown. Thanks for writing in, Carly. Dear Campy, my husband and I are wondering if we need a special driver's license to drive a motor home. Great question that we hear a lot. So Carly, you do not need a special driver's license to drive a motorized recreational vehicle. The license that you currently hold for your personal vehicles is all you need. And our final question comes to us from Rose in Thorntown. Thanks for writing in, Rose. Dear Campy, about what is the cost for license plates for a camper? Rose, it's just like your car or truck. It's based on the value of the camper and the cost diminishes as your camper ages. The BMV website does a great job of estimating what costs are associated with plating your camper. Well, that's it for this edition of Dear Campy. Thank you so much for tuning in and don't forget that you can write me at campy at letsgocamping.com. For a free signed color photo of Campy, write us at info at letsgocamping.com. Our time is gone for today. Thanks for joining us around the campfire. Remember, always be kind to one another and make a good packing checklist. Update it and refer to it often. So long, everyone. I'm your host, Kurt Hunt. We're so very glad you chose to join us. How do I know when it's time to grease the wheel bearings on my travel trailer? Well, I would answer your question, but the iPad is black and I can't see the answer. <laughs> Do you hear that? It's that cute music that's playing? That means it's time for another edition of Dear Campy. <laughs> there is music playing during it, right? <laughs> okay, ready? I'll do it right And our final question comes from Rose in Thorntown about what is the cost for license plates? Wait. That was very important, my bad. Oh, 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 oh what a surprise <laughs> this is, hey, Campy. Hey, Travis. Hey. What is this that you're in? Oh my gosh, and it's Tony with a camera. Oh.